There we go. Ooh, was that awesome or what? Well, you guys have now seen all the workshop grinding action going on. You've seen people working on pieces, but I wanna break down what are these tools used for? Why are they good? Why do we use them? So let me, let me bring it on in. Let me show you guys a little bit about what I've got going on here, okay? I've got two different grinders, okay? I've got a Bosch with a cut wheel on it, and then I've got a Metabo, which is this amazing German piece of machinery that I just love. It's my favorite handy dandy bad boy with a flapper wheel. Now the deal is, there's a, there are a couple different blades that you can put on metal tools. And what happens is, the blades are designed to be disposable. You throw them away when you're done. Look at how big this cut wheel is now. This is how big it is when it gets done and you can't even use it anymore. What happens is, it gets smaller and smaller. This blade is made out of rock particulate and it's made to be sharp the entire time you're using it and then as soon as you're done, you throw it away. Okay, now, the, the flapper wheel, same thing. Why do they call it a flapper wheel? They call it a flapper wheel because it's a bunch of little pieces of sandpaper that have been glued together like little flaps. And then what happens is they hit the metal and they throw metal off and they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And look, when it's almost dead, you can see the little glue on the side and that lets you know, get rid of it, it's dead. Now, all of these machines can be switched up, meaning that you can put a cut wheel on a machine that had a flapper wheel on it and vice versa. So they're super versatile. What happens is in the metal world, there's lots of times where you need to either cut or shape metal. And these are the only tools to do that with other than the big shop saw, okay? So what happens is I've got a piece and I wanna just make a little tiny cut in the piece and I bring the flapper wheel or the cut wheel right to it. So what I'm gonna show you guys today is a couple different amazing basically techniques that you can use to shape metal and turn metal that's pretty boring and kind of normal into really cool stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to use a cut wheel, okay? I've got a small piece of rod here, hot rolled rod. I'm gonna put it in my vise. Now I'm gonna show you how to use a cut wheel and how not to. Now people tell us, hey, wait a minute, Van Dorans, you guys took your safeties off your, your grinders. Yes, we took our safeties off our grinders because they're a lot more versatile and easy to use when you have the safeties off. But here's what happens. I've got my hand here. See how my hand cannot get to the blade? I'm blocked off, that's, that's a safety right there. And then if I keep my hand down here, I have a lot more range where I can actually hit the metal. If I've got a guard on, I'm very limited with what I can do. So if you approach this tool with confident respect, you'll never have a problem. I've been working on these things for over 20 years, never had a cut from one, and it's because I always say, where's my hand, where's the blade? Where's my hand, where's the blade? That's what you wanna remember. Now let me show you guys what you wanna do. You always wanna be on about the top third of the blade when you're cutting, okay? So you don't wanna go down on it because then the sparks are gonna come at you. You wanna go through it because then the sparks are gonna go down and away from you. Now let me show you how it works, okay? The biggest pain in the butt about these things is turning them on because they don't want to be turned on accidentally, so they're designed with this little notch right up in there, okay? And you have to push the notch up and in with your thumb. Now watch what happens when I just push the notch up but not in. Wait a minute, it went off. Uh-oh, blade's still spinning. Don't put my hand on it. No, 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 no. Okay, so I have to push it up and in. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to, to cut a rod and how not to cut a rod. You ready? Okay, now watch. This is how you cut a rod, okay? I'm gonna go through it, okay, watch. See where the sparks are going? They're going down, okay? They're not coming at me. All I wanna do is go right through it, use the weight of the tool to make the cut. I'm not putting much pressure on it. Here's what I don't wanna do. Oh, oh, no, oh, ow, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. No, don't do that, don't do that, all right? Now you can put these tools down while they're still spinning, but you wanna watch yourself. Don't touch your hand to the blade until it's completely stopped. Now that's how you cut a rod. Now let me get on my favorite bad boy, the Metabo, okay? What happens is, now I've got a flapper wheel, and when I'm using my cut wheel, I'm coming down through it. The flapper wheel allows me to be much more ergonomically balanced because I've got my legs shoulder width apart and I'm coming right down on it. It feels right. I've got my right arm here, my left arm here. I'm holding on. Ooh, it's like therapeutic. I don't ever want to stop. Okay, so here, let me show you guys how it works, all right? 
I'm gonna put a pretty square piece of 16 gauge steel in here, all right? But I wanna do some stuff to this 16 gauge steel. I wanna make it interesting. Let's say I wanna give it like a curve on the edge and maybe another curve and maybe a dip and maybe some waves over here, okay? So watch what I can do with this flapper wheel. It's freaking amazing, okay? Check it, check it. I always do safety first, gloves and glasses, always, always, always. All right, now here's what we're gonna do. Remember, up and in. Yeah! All right, now watch. If I wanna do a little bit, it's all about pressure, okay? So if I put a little bit of pressure on, I'm just gonna take a little bit of metal out. If I put a lot of pressure on, I'm gonna do a lot. You guys ready? Watch this. Just a little bit of pressure. See, I'm gonna make a slight dip in the metal, okay? That was just a little bit of pressure. But watch what happens when I put a lot of pressure on. I make a huge dip in the metal. Now what if I want to roll an egg? You ready? Watch. All I have to do is in a flat motion, kind of glide back and forth on it, just like so. And look at that. I turned a square edge into a round edge. And what if I want to make some waves? What? I just push in just like that. And I can make waves. What if I want to come the other way? I want to be pretty flat on the blade, okay? So I don't want to be up on the edge. I want to be on the flat. And I don't want to be back here because then I'm going to be putting sparks towards me. I want to be back here, right on the front, okay? Now, this is super awesome. Look what I just did. I just took a piece of metal that looked like this and turned it into a piece of metal that looked like that. I'm making bat wings, I'm making belt buckles, whatever. But the coolest thing I think that the grinder or the flapper wheel can do is actually take a piece of rod. This is actually hot rolled rod, which means they got this big cauldron of molten lava and they poured it onto these little tiny rod frames and the metal drips down in there and then it cools and mill scale comes to the top and that's this kind of gray stuff. If you look at the tip, look at that, it's all shiny in there. So all the imperfections went to the outside. Okay, now watch this. This is pretty amazing. I can take this pretty boring piece of metal and just with some pressure, I can pretty much make it look like this organic, wonderful tree branch and it's like a fingerprint. No two are the same, but just with pressure, watch. If I want to, I can just take the mill scale off, all right, watch. Ooh, look, it's so shiny. Okay, so that's just the mill scale, but look, if I add a little pressure, I can actually make it this super interesting thing, watch. Now what I just did is turned this into this. Mm -hmm. And let me show you what this can look like when it's put into a piece. Come on, come here, check this out. All right, so what you got is, I got a couple pieces that were done by first timers in the workshop, of course with my dad and my's help, okay? First I've got a stand piece. All we did was we took four rods, welded them all together here, did some connection points down on a base, put some great feet on it so we've got some shadowing under, and then we used different sections and sizes of rod to make this beautiful tree. Afterwards, we ground it all down and to keep it just like it is, we put a two-part clear coat transparent. It's called Transparente Brillante down here in Mexico. But then come over here. What if we want to rust it out? Did the same thing over here with some thicker rod and we actually made a hat rack. This is a jewelry tree. This is a hat rack. So we did the same thing, welded the rod together once we ground it down and then we rusted the whole thing out. And we've got all these amazing patina processes where we actually can rust metal in about 20 minutes. We don't need to wait for mother nature to take its course, all right? So here's what I'm gonna show you last but not least. Come with me, let me show you this cool last effect I can do with the metal. Oh, so cool. All right, come here. 
I'm gonna bring this big piece of metal over here. Now, this is what we call cold rolled steel. Cold rolled steel, okay? The reason why is because it was made, steel was made on a big sheet and it was very thick and then they roll these big rollers over it just with pressure and make it really thin. But the wonderful thing about cold rolled steel is it's very easy to work with. Look, I can bend it, I can manipulate it all different ways, but the other thing I can do is grind on it. Look what I can do on the face of it if I want to give any piece of metal I'm working on this brushed look, watch. Awesome! I know, it's amazing. I know, I know. But here's the deal. It, what it is is it's the light refracting off of the grind marks on the metal. But you don't just have to do it one way. You can do it two ways. Watch this. Now I've got two different lines of refraction. So you can imagine the potentials on any piece of art you're working on. This thing is just amazing. They're so awesome. So now you know, you've seen the grinders in action in the workshop. You've seen me detail them. You guys have seen everything you need to see. I hope you guys liked the video. If you loved it, hit subscribe, hit like, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and we will see you next time in the Van Dorn Metal Art Workshop.